In this video, we're going to walk through the process of installing the Snort Intrusion Detection software program on a Windows 7 computer. In brief, what we're going to cover in this video is downloading the Snort installer and the rules files that go with it, installing Snort, configuring Snort to run on the computer, and briefly testing it to make sure it works properly. First step is to get the software we need. We go to www.snort.org and click on the big green Download Snort button. There are many versions of the Snort uh, files, but for Windows, there's only one. We want the one that ends in installer.exe. That's the self-extracting installer file. Happens to be version 2955. You can tell by the name. Click on it. Download it to your computer. Once that is downloaded, you also want to download a rules package. There are many versions of that as well. We downloaded the 2955 version of the software, so we want the 2955 version of the rules. Download that to your computer. When you have those things downloaded, here's the downloads folder. You'll have the installer file and you'll have the rules package. First thing we're going to do is run the installer. Click OK. Accept the license agreement. Go with the default install. Notice by default the program is going to be installed in C colon backslash snort. That's just the snort directory on the root folder on the hard drive. Wait a few seconds while the program turns away and installs. When it's done, you'll see completed. Close this window. You'll see a pop-up reminding you that Snort requires the Win PCAP packet capture utility so that it can sniff the traffic it needs off your network card. If you do not have that installed already, you can go to winpcap.org and install it. It's a self-extracting uh, Windows installer as well. The current version is actually 4.1.3, 411 that's in this window. If you already have a program like Wireshark on your computer, then you already have winpcap installed and you don't need to do it separately. So having run the installer, we can look on the computer. Remember it said during the installation process that it was going to put it in Snort, so here's the folder, and you see the directory structure that gets installed. Bin is where the executable program is, etc is where the configuration files go, log file is where uh, output will be logged in the future, and then we have two rules folders. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the rules files and we're going to copy them into those two folders. So in the downloads directory we have the rules package. You want to open that up. It's just a zip file. You can open it with uh, 7-zip or WinZip, or in this case I'm using WinRAR. It really doesn't matter. Here's the structure that you will see in the rules file. We're not going to use SO rules. That stands for shared object. Those don't run on Windows typically, at least not without some extra help. We are going to open the rules folder. We want all the rules. There's quite a few of them. We're just going to select them all. Extract. Pick the directory we want, the rules folder, and I'll turn away for a second. Okay, we go back up a level. We do want the preprocessor rules, that's what preproc stands for. There's only three of these. There are already versions of these files on. Uh, in the Snort directory that's part of the installation package, but we want to make sure that we have the latest up-to-date version. So we'll extract those to that directory, and we will, we will say yes when the program asks us if we want to overwrite the existing files, as it will do now. Yes, yes, yes. And now we have all the rules files that we need. Uh, good process check. You open up a command prompt, since Snort is a command line utility. It's good to open it up as an administrator. Some things you do with Snort require administrative privileges. We change to the Snort directory and to the bin subdirectory where the executable is. We can type Snort V. It has to be an uppercase V. And that will return the installed version. So we can see now that version 2955 has, in fact, installed. The other thing you might want to do at this point if you have more than one network interface is check which interfaces uh, Snort recognizes as being available on your computer. To do that, it's snort 
W has to be a capital W, and you will get a list of all the active interfaces on your computer, and that will give you some guidance as to which interface you want to point Snort to when the time comes to actually run it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use number five. Not everybody has five or six interfaces, but we'll keep that in mind. So close that out for a minute. Uh, we don't need the downloads directory anymore. Now what we do need is we need to configure the program. To do that, we're going to open uh, snort.conf, the configuration file. It's in the etc subdirectory. So you can open it with any text editor you want. I'm going to use WordPad. It's a fairly long file. Don't let that upset you. Um, there's nine different sections. We don't have to edit all of them, but we're going to edit some of them to get it ready to run on the computer. Uh, first thing I recommend doing for Windows is changing these IP var settings to uh, var by themselves. They're set up for IPv6, but we don't really need that. You can replace these all at once instead of doing them individually. There's 11 or 12 of them in the file. Replace them all. Now those are done. Now that we've changed those, the very first one is about the definition for the home network. So you can leave it the way it is with any if you want, but in many cases we set it to the uh, IP address range for the local network so we can distinguish the internal network from the external network. So mine happens to be uh, the 192.168 pattern. and I'm putting a slash 24 at the end in CIDR notation so it takes the whole network. Now for the external network I want it to be everything else, so I use the exclamation point for not, and then I just reference the same variable, home net. And it's now my external network is basically everything that's not the home network. That's the only configuration I'm going to do there. You can reduce the number of uh, web server ports that you have here if you want. There's a lot there, but it's not necessary if you, if you don't want to. You can change any of these other port settings to match your computer if you need to, but in general uh, it's not necessary. What we do need to change is these directories, uh, the path declarations for where the different files exist. So you see the note for Windows users, you're advised to make this an absolute path. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We just copy the rules files into CSNORT rules. So I'll change the directory to that. We copy the preprocessor uh, rules to CSNORT preprof rules. We're not using shared object rules, so I'm going to comment it out. That means I'm going to put a number sign in the first space in the line. I'm going to do the same thing for the preprocessor rules, which we haven't gotten to yet, but might want to use those in the future, and I don't want to come back to this too many times. So I'm going to keep those in the same directory as the rest of my rules uh, for the reputation preprocessor. And that should take us to the end of that section. So in section two, typically you don't need to change anything unless you would like to declare a log directory. Uh, we know what the default log directory is already because we saw it in the smart directory structure. So we can just set that. Step three, uh, may or may not be any changes for you depending on your environment. Most people don't need to make any changes in step three. So cruise on down to step four. Now here you will need to make changes. These default locations are for a Linux system or Unix system and we're running on Windows. So what we can do is double check to make sure that we know where things are. If we go up a level to the SNORT directory and we look in the LIB, the library folder, we can see what these two different uh, things are that we're typing into uh, SNORT.config right now. So we want to change the dynamic preprocessor directory to C colon backslash snort lib turn it this way and you need to take off the trailing slash it's very important on Windows so that's the first one if we switch back to the dynamic engine you'll see there's just one file in here sf underscore engine dll so we want to make sure we reflect that accurately back in snort.config we'll leave dynamic engine the same C colon backslash smart backslash lib smart dynamic engine and we change the file name to match what we just saw SF engine dot DLL. Okay, we're going to comment out this last dynamic rules one because we're not using those on Windows. Now, 
preprocessors. There are many preprocessors with Snort. You can enable or disable as many of them as you like. Uh, I'm commenting out this first one because it only works in Snort inline mode, and we're not going to run the program that way, so that's not important. very last thing I want to look at here is the reputation preprocessor. It's the last one. You can comment this one out, but if you're going to leave it open, uh, then you need to adjust this so that it matches the right file name. You have to change the name of this file. This is not a rules file. It's just a list of IP addresses that are deemed to be OK or not OK, depending on whether you're talking about the white list or the black list. So I like to change the names to something a little bit more uh, straightforward. We don't need any of the output plugins set up right now. Right now, all the rules are set to load. We can leave it that way, or we can come out the, out the ones that don't make sense. But for our purposes, we can just leave it the way it is. And those are the changes. So having put all those pieces in place, what we need to make sure is that the last couple of things that we added are actually referenced properly. Because we configured the reputation preprocessor to reference a couple of files, we need to make sure those files exist or we will have a problem. So we're just going to run Notepad, create a couple of files. I'm put a number sign in the first space to do a comment here. I'm not actually going to put any IP addresses in here at all because I don't need them right now, but the file has to exist or the preprocessor will throw an error. So I'm going to save it as in the rules directory. I'm just going to save it as the same name that I put in the configuration. I'm going to check it as all files so it doesn't put a TXT on the end of it. I'm going to save it. I'm just going to change this to blacklist. I'm going to save it again. Save as. Same place. Blacklist. Change it to all files. And now I have those things the way that I need them. So I can close this. So now we're ready to test Snort and see if it runs. So the command we use, Snort is what starts the program. I need to declare the interface I'm running on. I'm running on number 5. I need to reference the configuration file. to Snort, etc, snort.conf. I'm going to direct output to the screen, dash A console. And I'm going to put a dash capital T at the end, which is just going to tell Snort to test my configuration and see if it's OK. It's not actually going to run the program. It's going to load the configuration file, make sure everything's all right, and if everything's all right, it's going to tell me that it's OK at the end. You can see where it paused that there aren't any entries in the whitelist or blacklist files, but that's OK. It's loading rules now to make sure that the rules that are referenced in the rule file declaration in step 7 are OK. not quite done yet, it's just loading. Sometimes you need to be patient, especially the first time you run it on your computer after you've installed it. And it says Snort successfully validated the configuration. That means there aren't any errors in the configuration file. Now, if I run it, I don't know what will happen, because there's all sorts of rules that get run, and it really depends on your environment. But if you want to test the tool to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is alerting when it runs into a rule that it knows, we can make some test rules and make sure that the program works that way. It's very simple to do. 
To do it, we're going to go into the rules directory, and there's a file that's already there called local, local.rules. So we're going to open that. It just opens the notepad. I'll change it to uh, word wrap so I can see. So there's a comment in here that says that you can go ahead and put your rules here. But by default, there's nothing in here. So you go to a new line. You don't put a number sign in the front because you don't want it blocked out. And we're going to make uh, three alert rules. Alerts the keyword, any, any. There's three different protocols you can alert on, ICMP, UDP, and TCP. So we're going to do one of each of those. It's going to give this message. So we'll see it on the screen, and we'll know that it's firing. And we have to give it an ID. Nice big number so we don't run into a conflict. And we're done. Copy that. Do it again. For UDP. And one last time. For TCP. I might change the uh, port to 80 since we're looking at largely web server traffic. Okay, save that file, close it out, hide this, and go back to my window. I'm going to start up the program, but I'm going to take off the dash T because I don't want to test anymore. I just want it to run. So the program will load just as it did during the testing. It's going to load in all the rules, including the three that we just put in the local rules file. Because there weren't any parameters in those rules, any traffic at all on the network that's ICMP, UDP, or TCP is going to start generating alerts. Even on a small home network, most people have a lot of UDP traffic going back and forth on their network, so I would expect to see some UDP alerts. To see TCP alerts, you may have to open a web browser and browse to a website, but then you can get those to fire. To see ICMP alerts, you may need to open a window and do a ping or trace route program, both of, you, both of which use ICMP windows. If you're just interested in any alert at all, then you can just go with the standards that come by. But if you want to see that all three of them are working, then sometimes you need to generate the kind of traffic that will actually send those alerts. So now we're packet processing, and you can see right away lots and lots and lots of UDP traffic that is firing alerts, because it's alerting on all UDP traffic. If I go back to uh, my open web browser, and I go back to the home page, and I just close it while it's doing that, uh, you can see a little bit of TCP traffic going by in the midst of all the UDP traffic. It's not very easy. But there it is. I hit Control C to get the program to stop running. You can look at the, uh, the detail briefly if you're interested. Just in the few seconds we had that running, the different kinds of things that came through, you get a breakdown of all the different kinds of traffic that was there, and you can see the program is running. And now you're ready to go ahead and write your own rules and include them in, uh, in, the, in the package.